We do not have a quote. No, we're just okay. gonna record. There now the volume. All right, sounds good. So this will be the this episode of the Godless Fight. Evolution. Yes, instead of a quote. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wait, we're recording. We'll just oh, we're on. Right. Oh, okay. are we recording now? <laughs> yeah. We we'll just dove like right it. in there. Oh, like yeah. It. So we're we're working on our uh, Google Hangout <laughs> slash Skype capabilities. We're like fifty percent there. So hold on. Okay. We're almost in outer space. We'll get it. Somebody must be knocking on my door because your dog's kind of freaking out he's right now. Freaking the fuck out. Nobody on the or podcast can hear that, stupid. but yeah, because he's dumb. Oh, can't they good? No, because he's kind of a dipshit sometimes. He's old. Not to say that old people are dipshits or anything, <laughs> but <laughs> I don't think he said anything about people until then. Oh yeah, just the animals. <laughs> Hi everybody. Yeah, so we're gonna talk about evolution this week. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I haven't I haven't prepared anything official for for the speakings on evolutions. Mm-hmm. Um there are some comments. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Damn it. Sorry, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I I can't hear him on the headphones, so it no, just sounds no, no. like you're a crazy man yelling at something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's there's a uh, you know I'm gonna go see what he's. All right, doing. <laughs> all right. You guys, you guys, Me and Matt will talk amongst yeah. you guys. We'll have to recap, I'm sure, probably. But <laughs> well, Dan stormed out of here after his dog. But I have, I have some bullet points to touch on, I guess. All right, for like a starting, huh? Like your starting points, like. Oh yeah, no, I just think- I wanted I I was thinking a good place to start would be um, Adam and Eve versus evolution. Because that's kind of that's kind of the first juncture where religion. Oh yeah, because if you science, if you take out the Adam and Eve story, you have nothing. Well, yeah, in, in a lot of it, sure. Because without Adam and Eve, you don't have original sin. Right. Yeah. Well, for there are some more liberal quote Christians that that do accept evolution and and so forth. Yeah. But, but I think that I think that that's a that's a pretty good that's a pretty good juncture where where science and religion sort of clash at a major point. So yeah, I, I was thinking that would be a good start. Yeah. I'm okay with that. I mean, I think, cause I think if my thought with that is if you, if you're really religious and you're holding on to your religion, you have to accept the Adam and Eve story mm-hmm. to have the story of the savior, to have the story of the resurrection, to have all the other stories that go beyond mm-hmm. that. And if you believe in evolution, yeah, you, you don't have your savior story. Well, right. And you also have, Assuming, I, I prefer to say accept evolution as a scientific principle rather than believe in. But um, if you accept evolution, then you also don't. You also have more genetic precursors to humanity than than one couple six thousand years ago. Yeah, you know, and that's and that's a big issue too because you know the Bible starts with Adam and Eve six thousand years ago or whatever. And there is a the genetic Adam and Eve. Well, yeah. Hi everybody. Hey, he's back. Dan has thoroughly beaten his dog and thrown. Were there some the Mormons banging at the front door? I don't know what the fuck was going on. He either I missed whoever was at the door, or there was nobody at the door, and he's just fucking stupid. He's just he'll yeah. every now and then think he hears something, or he, or maybe he does hear something. I don't know, but he'll just freak the fuck out. He probably farted. Shut the fuck up. He's old and a little. Yeah, I think he's going senile a little bit. Maybe mm-hmm. I don't know. He's a good dog. He is a really good dog, but every now and then I'm just like, what the fuck, man? Shut up. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, so we just, we just started we just started to side the conversation. We decided to start the conversation <laughs> on... Uh, side decided to start. <laughs> right. You, decided to start. you can't even conversation. go too far have even this. <laughs> Have you practiced? You have to have practiced that. No, I just... <laughs> oh, that meme that was on there with that... Is that the one you're talking about? Well, there's a couple what? memes where it's just like a word salad. Yeah. Well, yeah, but there was that one that someone posted one today Most on like atheists can't even fart to have been there to going with. Yeah, it. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Christian win. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, so we we decided that a, probably a good jumping off point for evolution would be the the juncture at which science and and religion really hit an impasse, which is evolution versus Adam and Eve. Yeah. So that's kind of what we were hitting on there. So, so you're saying that <clears throat> taking it from the Genesis. 
Well, I know that a lot of yeah. So, so the way this works is that a lot of religious people and a lot of religious uh, teachers and apologists all say that without original sin, there's no fall, which means that yeah. there's no need for Jesus' providing of salvation for the rest of us, right? So without Eve's original sin, there's no reason for Jesus to have come, and so then we don't have the Son of God visiting us, mm-hmm. And that does away with one part of the of the triune God, right? So, sorry for a lot of people. You know, if you if you do away with Adam and Eve and and have a, a view of evolution as being the start of, even if you want to say that you know God put evolution into play, God created the world and then kick started the whole process yeah. of evolution. We'll, and we'll get to that part later, but yeah, but so. For a lot of religious people, they they reject evolution just because if they accept that evolution is true, it destroys everything for them. Yeah, mm-hmm. my aunt is one of those people. Yep, you know she's she's had conversations with other family members where she's told them, you know, well, I can't believe in evolution because if evolution is true, my religion is false, mm-hmm. and my religion is obviously true, so sure. evolution yeah. is false. <laughs> right, <laughs> you know they won't. She won't. She won't just accept the science of it or, or do any studying or anything. She's terrified that she'll lose her religion if she decides that evolution is true. Mm-hmm. Well, that's like every Christian scientist starting point. Going well, there's a God, so if there's a God, that means this. But if that doesn't include a God in it, no, that's not true. Well, yeah, she's she's kind of a pre. I wouldn't even. Well, fuck, I don't know. She's kind of a presuppositionalist Mormon. In that she's she's just starting with what she's always been told. Yeah, that totally yeah. is, and and doesn't want to examine anything beyond that at all. Yeah, starting with the answer is yeah. completely presuppositionalist. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. and there there are plenty of Mormons like that. In fact, that actually brings me to my next topic, which is how incredibly dishonest the Mormon Church is about this. Because on the one hand, they've got BYU, which will issue biology degrees where they study evolution, they talk about geologic timelines, mm-hmm. all this kind of stuff, and then every bit of the temple endowment ceremony is about Adam and Eve. It's the full story embellished from the Genesis story, more than what the Bible has to say, and the aprons they wear are a tribute to the fig leaves supposedly worn by Adam and Eve when they discovered oh. their nakedness. So, <laughs> so they've got this I, weird juxtaposition. I thought they were making fucking bread. incredibly dishonest. I thought the Mormons were just making bread in those suits. <laughs> their, yeah. their temple. If you, their yeah. temple if, you, if you know what it looks like, yeah, they, they do look like old-timey <laughs> bakers. It does. It, the hat and That's the funny. apron. It, it kind of looks, looks like they should be tossing dough up in the air. Yeah. And <laughs> pizzas or something. Mamma mia. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I think the LDS Church is dishonest about a wide range well, of things. Well, a lot of things. But, I mean, this one specifically stands out. I mean, I don't know how any students that go to BYU – who are required to go to church every week and be active members unless you play for the football yeah. team or the basketball team, um, and and take these courses that talk about millions or billions of years of Earth history and geological timescales and, and then evolution of of animals into man and this and that. Yeah, I, I think humans are animals, but I'm just saying. But and then go to the temple and learn about a six thousand year Earth and Adam and Eve and it's a whole tribute and. I mean, they've got the, the temple has videos about Adam and Eve and this whole oh, yeah. the fall and, and you know Satan tempting them. And you can find thing. them on YouTube. So I think it's incredibly dishonest. Oh yeah, well yeah, it, it is incredibly dishonest. And from everything I understand, BYU actually has a really good biology department. Yeah, yeah, they it's strange. You know, one of my it's w- it's fucking not right, is what it is. Yeah, one of my one of my old Facebook friends who died a couple of years ago uh, from cancer. But he he grew up in Utah, went to BYU, got the fuck out, uh, started his own company for a while, was a CEO, uh, sold that company. It was some kind of biotech firm, sold that, basically retired when he was in his 40s, I think, and uh, then just did consulting work for other biotechs for a little while and ended up dying of cancer. But, I mean, he got his degree from BYU. Yeah. You know? And... You know the church is in is in kind of a a strange position because they, you know, the LDS faith tries to reconcile a lot of science with their teachings, and they accept a lot of science. Like 
even it's fucking crazy to me because a lot of LDS people do accept evolution as being truth, but their church teaches otherwise on a lot of things. And and I think the church has even come out and said that yeah, evolution is probably correct. I think the church's official positions on scientific matters are basically just to not discuss it. I'm yeah, 100% I think they generally they just gloss over it and just sort of keep on keeping on kind of kind of attitude. I I don't know how there even is a medical program at BYU. You know, because, oh, they just because fighting pray. fighting diseases is all about evolution. Science and uh, yeah, evolution of germs. Yeah, all about it. Different uh yeah, it's Yeah, the I mean the well, and like I said, they're kind of stuck because you know, on the one hand, they they know even if it's not an official church teaching. They know that evolution is correct. Or at least that you have to know what evolution is and you have to understand biology if you want to be a doctor or you want to go into any kind of into, into any kind of the biology sciences. And so they have to teach you the facts of evolution while still somewhat Holding trying to deny faith. it. I mean, it's just, you know, yep. what is it Greg Clark always says? You know, people are complex, people compartmentalize, people set things aside, people are a, ma a mass of contradictions, and I think that, that works mm -hmm. for anybody, but particularly in the LDS Church, and, and really almost any faith where they want to try to warp science to fit the views that they've been teaching for you know, hundreds or thousands of years. Um, you know, it, the, the LDS Church, at least, you know, to their, to their benefit, isn't like one of the evangelical colleges or universities where oh, they yeah. where they tell their students that evolution is wrong. You know, at least they're providing their students with a good education, even if they don't necessarily accept I, it as I fact I think that's worth, time. worse. I think that's worse. Do you? Yeah, I do because at least at least those fundamentalist Christians are sticking to what they say. You know, they're saying, well, it's not true, and we're not going to teach it. That's fine. It's consistent. Be, you know, the Mormons are going, you know, go to the temple, learn all about Adam and Eve, or go to BYU and learn all about evolution. But at least they're going to school and teaching them facts instead of teaching them Yeah, but them I just, bullshit. that, that kind of dishonesty when they, when they, when they pretend to be uh, um, uh, at the forefront of morality, that pisses me off. I don't like that kind of inconsistency. Yeah. But mm. so should, should we move on to why evolution makes sense? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just I, I wanted to throw this out there. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm looking. You know, I looked up what the LDS Church's official views on evolution. Yeah, are. yeah. Let's let's hear that. And according to Wikipedia, the LDS Church has produced a number of official doctrinal statements on the origin of man. These statements generally adopt the position as a church-approved encyclopedia entry states that quote the scriptures tell why man was created, but they do not tell how. Though the Lord has promised that He will tell that when He comes again, mm. oh. which it's fucking, they're, they're, they say that the scriptures tell that man cop, was though. created, but not how. That's a way I to mean, skirt they, around have they the not issue. Read, have they not read Genesis? Do they not know the Adam and Eve story? I mean, that are they saying that that isn't in the Bible, or that that doesn't say how they were created? I don't understand that. Well, the the other question that that obviously that begs is why was man created? You know, they say, well, Genesis talks about why they why. I don't why think it says why, why anywhere in there. Because God was it? lonely. He wanted somebody to torture him. It it, oh, it says that man was created. Is that what you yes, said? That oh, man. that. Okay. So yeah. we were created, but yeah. we don't know how. Oh, okay. God's like an evil 12 year old kid in a fucking sandbox. Yeah. Just creating little people, then taking his water bucket. Yeah. Start over. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the other, the other strange thing about LDS doctrine, of course, is that, you know, it's it's believed it's part of LDS doctrine that all of us were spirit babies, right? We're yeah, all which is we're weird. all birthed by we're, so we're all I mean from we're all collab. basically genetically no. linked to, to God. Yeah. Because God had physical sex with Mary. He traveled from a star or planet on or near a star or planet named Kolob to travel here and impregnate Mary. But well Traveled here to rape Mary mm -hmm. and impregnate her with his seed, which is fucking strange and weird. But I mean, and then that God has you know multiple wives in wherever the fuck He is, and they birth these spirit children that are then sent to Earth to occupy bodies of people. 
the whole fucking thing yeah. is really weird. So yeah. they, you know, they get tied up in. They know that they have to give their students an education in order to go forth and make money that they can then turn over to the church at a ten at a rate of ten percent per right. annum. Right. They also know that their teachings are fucking weird and strange. I mean, they they don't they can't really take a position on it either way because any position that they take it's at wrong. this point would contradict something that they've said in the past. <laughs> so yeah, they're yeah. kind of fucked. Which is kind of their position on any controversial issue. Yeah. And yeah. I've actually heard people use that just... spirit baby thing uh, for not allowing abortions. See, well, that's when they right. got spirit right. babies. <laughs> yeah, of course. Right. He, he, was sent, he's, that's a, he was sent from on high, you know. Well, yeah, and that you have to have, kill him. And that you have to have as many children as you can provide for oh, because yeah. if you've seen. Even if you can't provide for him, keep having well, them. Yeah, yep. I mean, if you've seen Saturday's Warrior or, you know, a lot of the other LDS doctrinal films or, or LDS themed films. That talk about you know the the preexistence you know you have your heavenly family that's just waiting to join you down here on earth mm -hmm. and if you don't have as many babies as you possibly can all of your heavenly babies are made very very sad right <laughs> you know so <laughs> get fucking <laughs> you've you've basically stranded them in heaven which is f also fucking stupid because aren't you gonna be up there sooner or later yeah and w aren't they not happy up there yeah, isn't I mean, that a can better they, place can they not see what's going on down here also whole... what a genius plan from an omnipotent and omniscient fucking being <laughs> to torture <laughs> that's spirit gonna babies say in heaven. all right i'm gonna create six spirit babies and I know that that couple is only going to have one, and the rest of these are going to be miserable. And I'm going to make those couple that couple miserable for not ha and feel guilty for not. Fuck you, God. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> it's all it's what a bunch of bullshit. It's also fucking weird and stupid. Like I don't. It, that was that was the big thing with me when I was in LDS church, even when I was little, was just everything I was taught just led to more questions like, yep. that's yep. fucking dumb. If that's the case, then why this and this and this? You know, if like all, as we're talking about all these different things, I'm just thinking about the different times I was sitting in church or in Sunday school and, and they were going over a lesson and I was just like, well, that's weird. If, you know, if we have spirit babies, why wouldn't they just stay there? Mm -hmm. They're already yeah. in heaven. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's great. Why would they come down Don't here to feel with... pain and torture and whatever? Mm -hmm. Well, it's because they want to be with their families. Well, they were with their families before any of them came down yep. here. Yeah, you split them the fuck up! <laughs> yeah. Well, God, God sent them here as a test. Well, doesn't God know what they're going to do when yep. they get down yeah, here? Isn't he, does. he all knowing? Not you know, much of a test. Well, yes, but he gives you free will. Okay, well, he gives me free will, but he would still fucking know what the fuck oh, I'm going to yeah. do. So right? you don't have fucking but, free will. But no, he doesn't. It's just he doesn't give free will. That whole thing is bullshit yeah. anyway. So, so what about what about what about the twelve year old girl that goes to a concert with a forty seven year old man and rapes her at gunpoint in his car? Right. Yeah. That's what, fucked who up. Who has free will? Does the twelve year old no? The fucking rapist has free will yeah. that's protected in that situation. But God so wanted what, the 12-year-old raped. So. Yeah, well, of course he did, because that's free will. Right? Yeah. No, fuck that whole argument. The whole thing is it was bullshit, It was a but, test. Well, But like I say, sure, I mean, but, anytime I was in church or anytime I talked to anybody who's religious and they, they, they try to have a conversation with me, mm -hmm. it just leads to a bunch of really fucking uncomfortable questions. Yep, yep. And, but they, and they, I end up like... like it makes me almost angry how fucking stupid they are sometimes just for believing what they do and for not taking a second to fucking think about it and examine yeah. what the fuck. Well, that's do. it. They want everyone to accept it, and then they can just keep talking about stuff that builds upon things that don't make sense. Yeah. But when you were, when you were talking about questions you had you know, early on in the church, that reminded me too, and I thought that would be a good, good way to broaden this a little bit out, outside of just the LDS church, but just religion generally. And I think a good question is why world religions generally stay away from dinosaurs. Well, and, and that whole, I mean, you can go back to the Cambrian, you know, but, but I'm just saying generally anything before man religions don't really have an answer for. They don't, they don't even try to try to discuss that. Well, some of them do. I mean, of well, course, except the, for the, 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 you know, the devil the, planted the bones. I yeah, mean, the, well, the creation that. museum is that man coexisted with dinosaurs. Yeah, well, that's and, baloney. and they couldn't I mean, go on the ark or, or they went on the ark, but they didn't survive. I don't know. And, that and the, that's fucking behemoth is a dinosaur. dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go back a few episodes. <laughs> and uh, if, if I remember correctly, I, 
I believe when I was going to LDS church, they said that, yeah, men, men coexisted with dinosaurs. I think they've shied bullshit. away from that since then. I never heard that in church, but I mean, it doesn't mean you didn't. I just, I, I never heard them. You know, even that's, and it. that's the other part of, of the LDS church that is weird and strange to me. The is lay that, ministry. Yeah, the lay ministry and that you can ask, you can ask a group of Mormons any question about any of these topics. You can, you can have a room full of 10 different Mormons and you'll get, I don't know between five and eight different answers about about what the church teaches or what they personally believe about what they've been told by the church. Like there's no, there are no hard and fast rules within the LDS church because it's constantly fucking changing and nobody can keep up. And you have different prophets saying different shit yeah. all the time. What I I think the the probably the most um, creative answer I've heard about dinosaurs from the Mormon Church was that God created Earth out of other former planets and those bones oh. are remnants of creatures that lived on other planets before. Mm. But then when oh, I, shit. but then <laughs> oh, sorry, I sneezed. Yeah. There. But then, but then when you I know? talked about the difference between the, 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 the distinction that God makes between him being God himself being a body of flesh and bone, and then we're bodies of flesh and blood and that the resurrection encompasses all of that and why we still have dinosaur bones means they must be part of our resurrection, which means they can't be from another planet. So they're part of our resurrection. So how do you explain that? And they'd never have an answer for that at all. <laughs> well, when you, when you were saying that, that, that Ryan's was one looking of the confused, like you just went in circles and, and well, backwards. We're talking and, religion, man. You got to throw you in did a figure eight. Logic. So when you were, when you were saying that that was one of the weirdest explanations you've ever heard, it reminded me that, uh, back before I identified as an atheist, like I was an atheist, I just didn't really know what an mm -hmm. atheist was or anything. And this was when I worked at AT and T uh, with Jason Stock, and we were having a conversation one day with one of our coworkers, and Jason was asking him, "Okay, well, you know, how do you explain dinosaur bones and shit like that?" And this LDS guy was like, "Well, I mean." God had to make the earth out of something, right? I mean, he oh. didn't just... So, yeah, he's taken parts yeah. from different things and yeah. uh. puts them together. And, yeah, man, it's... So, yeah, it's, that's how it happened. Well, and where do those original parts come from? And I, I hadn't yeah. thought about that for a really long time until yeah. you just mentioned that. But yet he made man out of nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, dust, okay. Or if you're Muslim, a clot of blood, I guess. Well, I mean, well... But, I mean, according to Mormon theology, God didn't even really make man out of nothing because he had birthed us as spirit babies yeah. and we're made in his image. And he was he was as we are now, and one day we may become as he is. Right? Yeah, but so, be before there were spirit babies, it was intelligence. Oh, uh, we were just that intelligences? We were born from. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Like the talking stars in that Christmas movie where he, like, sees his life. <laughs> it's a wonderful it's life. A it's a wonderful, wonderful life. life. Yeah, the talking stars. And they're talking at the beginning of the movie. Clarence and... Mur yeah. <laughs> Mur Murray. Murray. Is that, is that the intelligence is that they're talking Mary? about? That, that was his wife's name. Murray. Yeah. Yeah. Zuzu's Paddles. <laughs> Jimmy Stewart. I heard they're going to remake that movie. I hope not. It'll be an abysmal failure. Yeah, well, it's supposed yeah. to come out. You can't like, fucking live up to that shit, man. That's... I can't remember who was going to be in the remake either. I just remember hearing they're going to be doing a remake of I it. Mean, it's supposed to come out like Christmas of 2015 or something. Right. How many times have you seen Mr. Kruger's Christmas? Mr. Kruger's? Dude, I like that one, man. I like Mr. I like Kruger's Christmas. One. I don't think I've ever yeah. seen it. It's an LDS movie, but it oh. has Jimmy Stewart. Yeah. It it's was, a Christmas it was, movie with Jimmy Stewart. It's, it's a little touching, that yeah. one. They, they yeah. show it. They show it at the temple. You can go and watch. I it was for thinking, free, like, yeah. I was hoping it was Freddy Krueger that you were talking about. <laughs> like, I remember going and seeing the the lights at Temple Square every year with my family, and we'd always go and watch Mr. Krueger's Christmas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Should we get into evolution? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> what does Mr. Krueger I just, say? I just worry about alienating our non LDS fans. Well, you know, I would say even our non LDS fans are going. That's, That's kind fucking... of interesting and fucked up. Yeah, <laughs> man, man, prob probably. Right I mean, that. I. If I wasn't yeah, LDS, probably right. it would be like it would be like hearing all of the really inside weird shit about Scientology. Yeah, right? or, like, or Islam. That shit fascinates me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I never even heard the term LDS until I came here to Utah. Right. People are like, I'm LDS. I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> yeah, you're fucking Mormon. Like, I'm supposed to fucking know? Long dick sinner. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, I'm LDS. I'm a long dick sinner. I'm a long dick sinner. <laughs> you got plenty of those in Colorado City. 
That's the polygamous colony. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That was bad. Colorado, Colorado City and Hilldale. Yep. Yeah. And Harriman. And the yeah. Mm-hmm. And the rest of the state. Yeah. Bountiful. There's uh, I think I've mentioned before that anytime you go into the Bountiful Costco, there's almost always a polygamist family in there. Really? Yeah. We should do like an atheist shopping spree there. Like and not the not like the secular, you know, more uh, hip modern Polygamist They're family. not the ones dressed in all like the. We're talking the prairie dresses oh, yeah, that's with, what the, I was thinking. with yeah. the giant bangs and and it's funny because it'll be one guy dressed in a suit with these women in homemade dresses, yep. you know, with the padded shoulders and the yep. giant the giant bangs and everything, and they'll be following him around, and then they all leave the store and go and pile into a van and like a convertible Mustang. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> yeah. And all their dresses are like, they look like they stole curtains and tablecloths yeah. from a small town yeah. cafe. <laughs> I w- I've always wondered if they're, if they're dresses before their curtains or their curtains that they turn into dresses. Oh. Hmm. I'd say curtains first. Yeah. That's what I think. Could be. I've never seen their houses with curtains on them, so. Yeah. You just buy homes really? and hope they have curtains in them. <laughs> to take the curtains for clothes. Oh, right. And <laughs> then, then move on. Gotcha. All right. So, moving on to the next bit of uh, evolution. Yeah. Well, I, I just wanted to. I mean, obviously, we hit Adam and Eve, and then some, and and some other things. But I, I was just, I just wanted to hit some of the key points of evolution and why it makes sense. So, well, I, I and I think we should probably touch on some of the misconceptions so, yeah, about, say, about yeah, evolution. I think, I think that would too. Be, yeah, that would be you know one time. of the one of the misconceptions that I run into all the fucking time with people who don't understand evolution is that they say, "Well, why did why did we stop evolving? You know, we yeah. went from mm-hmm. we, we we turned we went from monkeys and monkeys turned into humans and then we just stopped." Yeah. They don't seem mm-hmm. to understand that evolution is still going on. Yeah. everything is still evolving. Mm. Everything, humans, Just you can't plants, see fucking everything around you that is living is still evolving. It's like your it, kind is going extinct right now. Us gingers? The ginger gene is going bye-bye. Well, I've heard that was a bit of a know. not really. Was yeah. it really? Yeah. Yeah. Or is it, was that more of like a, a cycle type thing that they're... F- I, I think it was just a not really true thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think so. But we do have a higher pain tolerance. Yeah, I saw that. I've heard, I've heard, I've heard, I've heard that too. Um, but the, the the thing that's really hard about what you were just saying is, you know, if you say a human has eighty five years to live or something like that, right? That's a, that's the tiniest, teeniest, tiniest little snapshot of oh, yeah. the evolutionary time scale. That during your lifetime and your father's lifetime, and your grandfather's lifetime, and your grand great great grandmother's, and you know all the stories you hear are such a small sliver on that time scale that you'll never detect any changes in anything that happens I mean, on earth. So well, you can not take- just climate, but evolution. I mean, all that stuff you'll never, you'll never see or hear about any of that stuff happening at all. I mean, you can take like the average height of humans right, from like sure. 1800s till now, sure, even sure going, well, you know, the average height that back then used to be, you know, like five, five or something now. Yeah. You know, it's not uncommon to have like I'm six three. You're all close to six foot close, or yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm right definitely over foot. five five. Yeah, I mean, I used to be like the average height. Now that everybody's like, yeah. Well, and I'm short, and I'm like five ten, maybe something like that. Yeah. Well, and then you've got you know you've got people who are able to travel the world now and sure. and mate with people of different races yes. yep. and and so you know we we have. We're not we're not landlocked and divided from each other, evolving into separate right uh, into separate races. We're sharing more genes. Yeah, yeah. We're there, there's a much greater mixing going on. So yeah, you know, that's that's another way that we're evolving. Right, which is which is in itself another small point toward evolution too, which is that all of the seven billion humans on Earth share a smaller uh, gene. Uh, difference than a single troop of chimpanzees in West Africa would have, which means there was a bottleneck in human history yeah. where genes were stifled, and so so the variance in in genetics among humans, even though there's seven billion, is smaller than than you might find in just in a group of a few dozen chimps in West Africa. Well, that's why they can trace huh. our ancestors back so 
far. Because I can't remember. I was watching the whole thing on the genetic code. We're talking mm-hmm. about the the code markers saying, "Well, you got this one, this one, and this one." So that means you, right? You no, know, where you, where you you, you came you through Northern from, yeah. Europe, and you kind of your family went through this part of you know Asia or whatever, and this is where your family's been genetically. Yeah, where they can trace your lineage all the way back to a certain tribe in South Africa. Earth, yeah. Another <laughs> another Excuse another me. feature that's really difficult to explain if if God created everything is vestigial organs or vestigial limbs. Yeah, or shit that that yeah. I mean, we all have tail bones. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or why do whales have leg bones? Yeah. yeah. You know. Um, why do I have append- so many organs that fail? An appendix that, that yeah, I can't sure. take it out and. It won't affect me one bit, but if it breaks right. inside of me, I'm, I'm dead. I mean, yeah. really, the ultimate <laughs> question is, why aren't all animals perfect? That's the real question. If, because, if, because the thing is, yeah. when you talk about evolution, it makes sense that there are mistakes. And that there's leftovers. Yeah, and it makes sense that things are just good enough. If there's a perfect God creating it, there would be no cancer. There would be no starvation. There would be no impairments. None but of that. You wouldn't stuff breathe through the same hole that, that you, you drink eat from. Yeah, that you eat and drink through. Right, and that, yeah, and just like Neil Tyson said in Beyond Belief 2006, he's like, "That's not that hard of a thing to ask for." Yeah. No. Dolphins breathe and eat from different, different holes, holes in their body. Like <laughs> he's like, Santa could bring this one. <laughs> it's not that hard. <laughs> Well, and it's a contradiction anyway, right? It's a logical contradiction because yeah. a perfect being would not know imperfection, would not be able sure. to create anything that was imperfect. Mm. So it's just a logical contradiction anyway. If you are perfect, there is no way for you to make something that is imperfect. imperfect. If you did, you wouldn't be perfect. Right. Makes sense. Mm. Okay. Try as you might, you would not be able to do it. What if he was just being a dick one day, going, like, here's a fuck up, take it, I meant to do that. And well, then, then you can, then, get in, but I then mean, you can expand on that a little bit more. Then he's too an and asshole. Say, well, a perfect being would know imperfection. Yeah, I mean, I was going down that, but I was also doing well, like with what Ryan was just saying because I was trying, I was trying to think like you could, you could make a case for an all powerful God who's not all loving, who's all dickish. Sure, sure, and and that wouldn't, that wouldn't, you wouldn't exclude a God from the situation that way. He could just. He could just give somebody AIDS or starvation or cancer or whatever. Well, you hear like Let's just say, see how this plays yeah. out. It's, yeah. a, it's a test. <laughs> but he's he, testing you. Right, which is exactly what they say. I know. But then they turn around and say he's perfect and all-loving. That's yeah. what doesn't make which sense. Which is why there was recently with the, the uh, 21-year-old woman in Oregon that's going to uh, medically you know, end her life because she mm-hmm. has that uh, okay. tumor that cannot be operated on her. Uh-huh. No, she's going downhill fast. The advanced brain cancer. Yeah, and she wants to end her life on her own terms. Mm-hmm. And people are all like, "Well, God gave this as our test. You no. know, if she gets past people lay hands on her, everything will be no. better." I'm like, "No, <laughs> that's fucking cruel and inhumane." It is. Yeah, it is. She and is, it's never worked. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's like Ever. she is going through an extremely painful way of dying. And it's she's going to lose life. her mind. Yeah. If she does it naturally, she wants to do it her own way while she still yeah. is. And she knows right what's going on. That. And anybody who is compassionate and caring would what, fucking let her do oh, yeah. that. Yeah. Yep. Well, that state, it's legal. But the guy, all these people, people, people writing in saying, oh, she just needs to let God, you know, sort it out. This is not God's yeah, the, plan. No. The like, comments on that post were driving me fucking I was nuts. Like, there is no she just such needs thing to, as I, Did you see God. all the LDS oh, yeah. fucking people You just need to have the, the missionaries yeah. come there and lay hands on her and she'll be all better. She should just get a blessing from her bishop. Like, yeah. That no, you fix everything. All right. Well, send those missionaries over to regrow an amputee's limb, and after they do that, they can come do this and see if they can, and then, you know, until then, fuck off. Fuck it, send them to Africa it's and never, have them cure Ebola. They're, yeah. they're in Africa! <laughs> causing Ebola! <laughs> and it's never worked! They're still starving! Yeah, go fucking cure Ebola, and cure Ebola, AIDS, AIDS, fucking all of these maladies. Just go fucking bless all of these people yeah, and what about, fucking cure it. What about all the wars in the Middle East that all the fucking Mormons support? Yeah. What about that? Why doesn't God do something about that? Does he not care about Muslims? Well, that's because their God's Well, he cares the about them God. a lot less because they're worshiping the wrong God, obviously. Well, I'm just saying that he's not perfect <laughs> and he's not all loving. <laughs> Definitely not all loving. Nope. Can't yeah. be. There's no way you can reconcile that unless you want to play the fucking stupid line of saying, well... We just don't understand him. 
Yeah, but, God is all loving, yeah. but we're imperfect, and so we can't understand this perfect being's mind and right. why they would do these things. And and there's you know, no you know way what you I've, can understand his plan. You know what I've always said to yeah. that? I've always said, well, then he has a perfect understanding of my, my, my teeny little mind, and he can make me understand at any minute, and he chooses not to. Yeah. So yeah. fuck him anyway. <laughs> so, all right, so we've narrowed it down to there's no such thing as a loving God. Right. If there really if, was a God. If you he, accept evolution. Or if you don't accept evolution, you mean? No, if if you accept evolution, there can't be a loving God. Oh, if you accept it, I don't accept there's a God, period. So Yeah. yeah. No, I know, I know, <laughs> yeah. I know, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying. From the theist point of view. Narrow it down to that. Um, well, my next topic then is, mute, is moot completely then because it was pretty much based on that. Um, you came all prepared. I'm proud of you. Oh, thanks, man. Um, Good job. Except my segues and stammering on, on the podcast of been less than professional <laughs> like we like we're like we're fucking pros anyway or this is a profession <laughs> so this i guess oh man i wanted to get more into evolution itself i thought i thought those would really well like get us going on that but uh i was watching one the other day where it was actually ironically watching it with uh a, a talk that dawkins was doing mm-hmm. where the guy was trying to like one of the big things that you get all the time is like, well, if evolution is true, then how do we live all these time without eyeballs? Right. What? Like the people that okay. believe that each thing was like yeah. our eyes, that's how they always were. Like, yeah, they love the eyes. Yeah. Like the eyes are, or this guy even said, well, how did they go to the bathroom? Yes. Like, or what good you, is half a wing or that kind of thing? Yeah. Cause it, oh, it, it's going yeah. through like, well, instead of taking from the way evolution works where everything is, Everything makes minute changes over time. Right. They're kind of going with, well, boom, there's an eyeball. Yeah. Okay, boom, now there's a head around the eyeball. Right. Well, now, now there's a head and eyeball, and how does it walk? And yeah. an arm. Well, it's there's, got, it's there's, got no lungs. There's a number of things at play in that, in that kind of one, – one is the first thing we talked about earlier, which is that snapshot of tiny little incremental time. Oh, yeah. We have just a teeny little view, and we're not thinking on the large time scale. So that's one problem. Um, the other thing is – uh, what what the difference is between a primitive eye and no eye at all? Yeah, and our eyes aren't even that good. No, and that's the third thing. Yeah, is that they they view us as the pinnacle of evolution, no, which is our just eyes are clearly shit. compared to compare <laughs> our eyes to an eagle's way or a squid or even like some or, fish have better eyes than we do. Well, at least squids have the retinas facing the right direction. Yes, but the thing is though. Or the light receptors. That's what yeah. it is. The light receptors. Sorry. Is if 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 people cannot accept that we have primates as our cousins, they yeah, definitely cannot accept that we came from brothers. a single-celled organism. Well, sure, but everyone's done that in nine months. Exactly. So that's not that hard to believe. But taking a single cell. I mean, I think we need to go into the talking about like the eyes and how do you poop and how do you grow arms? How do you get poop? That's, that's, well, that, all, that is the that is the the really the tough. That was to, one of the things this guy said to Richard Dawkins. Like, well, how did they go to the bathroom? How are you gonna go Dude, poop with I only half a colon? One. He's like, he's like, he Richard Dawkins. Like, are you? He didn't know. He was like, what are you I, serious? Is, are I you? Think I did see that one. Are you being like real right now? Well, here's a better question. Why did God make it so we have to shit? Well. He could have done without that. Yeah. There's, Presumably, he could just poof it away into outer darkness if you wanted to. Poo-poo. It could just, it could just yeah, vaporize. Poo-poo. Yeah, vaporize. 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 Wow. Vaporizer. The fucking punster <laughs> Duffy tonight. <laughs> you haven't seen that movie? What? That's from a movie. Oh. Was it a movie or was yeah. it a... I was giving you credit. I was well, going to say it was, was that? just like a... With Jack Black and uh, where he invents the Jack vaporizer. Black. It's the spray. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, 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 for yeah, the, yeah. For the dog poop in your front lawn, and it ends fucking, up like what was the name killing of that everything. Was that? Was uh, that Shallow House? Envy. Envy? Envy. That's what mm. it was. Yes. Yeah. But seriously, if we were, if we were created perfectly, we wouldn't shit. But we there's. We wouldn't have any of those issues, right? Like, come on. Like, it's just. It's there, there's an stupid. organism in the ocean that's. They're basically like floating colons. All they do is they suck food through them and process it and oh, just okay. go right out the back. Just you know, super the food just, and They're like clear. And that's all it is. It's a thing that like slinkies around the ocean and all it does is suck plankton in and poops it out. <laughs> that's it. Well, there's, there's, that's there's all it examples does. of all kinds of. I different feel like stages. that's all I do sometimes. 
<laughs> that is pretty much all Dan does. But I mean, it's like the <laughs> well, simplest. He's a great pizza cutter as well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like the simplest form of digestion right there. Sure. It's a yeah. tube. Straight through, yeah. Straight through. Yeah. No other real organs. You know, some stuff clings, some stuff don't. And it's just, it slinkies around. Slinkies around. Slinkies around. It sounds Keep like going a on prostitute. that for a minute, and then we'll talk about the giraffe's laryngeal. Oh. Oh, the one that goes all the way down and loops all back up. So what are we looking online right now? I'm updating my status to say that we're doing this podcast. Oh, you're not doing research either, am I? I'm just looking at a blank screen right now. Matt Matt has gone to go potty. Yes. That's the usual thing. Should I try to say some of these names? Because I don't know what are next. Some of the names of what? The people that were studying evolution before, before Darwin. Darwin. Sure. I always hate the fact that people are always like, well, it's Darwinism, man. It's Darwinism. Like, no, dude, there was, <laughs> he did, it wasn't his sole idea. And Darwin wasn't completely correct in a lot of the things that he wrote about in, in regard to evolution. And neither were these earlier guys who, the earliest one on here is James Usser, 1851 to 1656 is when he lived. And he's the first person on here to actually have anything to do with uh, evolution as a biological thing. And he was, or basically he was the first person to go against the versions of Judeo-Christian creationism. Uh, 17th century English archbishop. Yeah, that's a long one. But then you got uh, Carlos Lyonis, 1707. Uh, John Ray, 1627. Comet de Buffon, 1707. Sounds pretty French to me. How do you uh, spell Comet? C O M T E. C O M T E D E. Comte. Comte de Buffon. Yes. But then in uh, 1731, there's a Emerson Darwin. Emerson Darwin? Emerson Darwin. The grandfather of Charles Darwin. So it was all Emerson's fault. He fucked that kid Everybody up. Everybody blames Charles, but it was really the fault of Emerson Darwin. He set his grandson on the wrong path. Then John Baptiste, I've heard his name before. Yes. Uh, 1744 to 1829. Uh, George uh, Coover, Cover, C-U-V-I-E-R. He was from 17... Cuvier. 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 Charles Lyell and James Hutton were all scientists that studied something to do with evolution before Charles Darwin. Mm-hmm. Yes. <clears throat> Well, yeah, like I said, Darwin wasn't the first, and he, he wasn't correct on everything he wrote about. No, but you, you always hear people that fight on the creationist side. goes, oh, well, you believe in Darwinism? Darwinism, like, yeah. Like, <laughs> no, he, he, you do realize Darwin didn't come up with this whole fucking thing. That's, that's not a thing. It's, so you, you, yeah, first of all, I would choose to say that I accept evolution. Yes. Yeah. Rather than that I believe in the scientism of Darwinism. I believe Darwin <laughs> got some things thing right is. with the speciation. The scientism. Good call. But yeah. That was, and that I was from our it, pre-podcast yeah. discussion. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, as far as I really know about all of Darwin's work, he'd studied variations in species. Right. Well, Like you look at a species and go, well, here's the difference between this one and this one when they're family and like yeah, mo- them. Mostly island populations. But the finches. Well, yeah. yeah, the finches, the finches. Sure, from the Beagle expedition. Yeah, of course. But but he also had people from all over the world sending him specimens for him to look yep. at and going, okay, yeah, this is a little different from the one here. This is what mm-hmm. they look like here and this is what it looks like here. And Right. He was he was studying extreme selection pressures yeah. on, on certain species and when and was in, late in his life forced to sort of admit that that was the situation that was going on and kind of... No, I, I, I don't know that Darwin he, was going to be he was going to be a clergyman. Yeah, I don't know that he altogether got rid of his religion. I, I'm not sure about that, but he at least had to make room for the kind of time scales that it would take for yeah. those selection pressures to to take place. Which is why I think it's funny when you hear people like, well, Darwin confessed to being a Christian on his deathbed. Yeah, well, that's not true. Oh, and if he did, who the fuck cares? Yeah, and, it's not true anyway. And, yeah. But yeah, and you, how would you, that disprove? I mean, there are Christ- there are Christians year. right now who fucking go to church every Sunday and are fucking biologists. Yeah, so, so there's, there's pastors right. that go to do your services every weekend. and They're atheists. That's true yeah. too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're just afraid to get out of the game. Yeah. Well, the so and then the other one of the other misconceptions that I hear all the time in dealing with. 
people who don't have an understanding of evolution is that we came from monkeys. Mm-hmm. That no. you know, if if we came from monkeys, why are there still yeah. monkeys? Right. They we, they don't yeah, understand that we we didn't come from the monkeys that you see around you no. right now. We have a common ancestor way back. Right. We didn't. Uh, the, either, the monkeys you see, you don't you don't go to the zoo and look at a chimpanzee and expect that you know one time a while ago one of those chimpanzees magically turned into a human being. That's yeah. not how it fucking works, people. And and we we didn't come from chimpanzees either. We came from a common ancestor. ancestor. Right. And so a, an analogy might be, if Americans came from Europe, why are there still Europeans? Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Right? It's exactly like that, though. Yeah. It really is. Like, that's exactly it. So Europeans, a group of Europeans moved to America and were isolated and became something slightly, very slightly different. And Europeans continue to progress as Europeans independently of Americans. And then the two came back and met again and had a lot of social differences. Yeah. That's evolution. That's the difference. So Europeans still exist. Americans now exist, but they didn't. Americans didn't come from the Europeans you know today. They came from a common ancestor where all the Europeans, all the Americans were the same group at one point that split. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, you can see, you know, people, people talk about the difference between microevolution and macroevolution and and stuff like that and, and i mean even even if we want to look at some of the social constructs that that have that evolved over time well no yeah okay no I, I don't think there is a difference but well and i only time yeah well and a lot of the a lot of the uh, uh social s- social evolution um that happens when groups split like that i mean that's why we have different languages that's why we have different accents mm-hmm. even among people who speak the same language mm-hmm. you can see that just in regional dialects and regional yep. regional uh, just accents, accents well, Spanish throughout and the United Italian States evolving from Latin is a great example as well. Yeah, yeah, it's it's that it's where a group is is split apart and each one grows differently. I mean, it's mm-hmm. and it and it's based on their surroundings, based on their on the environment yeah. they're exposed to the influences yeah. selection yeah. Pressures, a lot of yeah. outside influences that they don't have any control over but mm-hmm. they adapt to fit the environment in which mm-hmm. they find themselves mm-hmm. yeah so like mexican spanish has a lot of words for things that you might find in the sonoran desert that don't exist in europe and spain yeah so words have been concocted and 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 added to the language um and that's evolution yeah well it's like even trying to like even being over in like in iraq or afghanistan sure. trying to Work with a translator to say something. It's like, well, they don't have a word for that. It's like, well, fuck. What do I say then? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know. Maybe I, how much? I don't know how much experience. Maybe you did in Afghanistan, but like the difference between Arabic and Urdu. Pashtun or or, or or Urdu. Yeah, Urdu. Pa- Pakistan. Yeah. We never had. Yeah, well, we we had uh, oh, okay. Pashtun. Okay. I don't know what the that Pashtun is. Pashtun was like their tongue or whatever. But there there are pockets though. Where language doesn't get mixed, right? There's yeah, isolation. Well, I mean, especially Iraq is probably a bigger one with it. Cause you got the Kurds, sure, the and Kurds, yeah, the, the, the Shiites and the Sunnis, and well, and even I mean, they all have separate little different versions of their dialects. Mm-hmm. Like you speak Sunni, you speak Shiite. Well, and most people say, you know, when when referring to the language that Chinese people speak, they usually say they speak Chinese. Do you speak Chinese? No, nobody speaks Chinese. No, you Mandarin, speak Mandarin, Mandarin, Mandarin or Cantonese. Yeah, yeah of course. Nobody right. speaks Chinese, right? Well, and they wouldn't have asked. They wouldn't ask Ryan that either. They would be end tape tired if I'd be. Who who would you do? <laughs> <laughs> do you not know that? No, you didn't speak any Arabic at all. No, I, I learned the alphabet. I remember. I remember it ends with uh, yay, and there's two letters, and then I go fa and q. <laughs> well, okay. that's all I remember of the alphabet. Interesting. Okay. Yay, okay, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Well, the last letter in the alphabet was yay. I was like, yay, oh, yay. we got the end of the alphabet. <laughs> and then two <laughs> letters were in a row. One was fa and one was q. So mm. we'd say those two, especially sure. fast guys, so to say, fuck you. Yeah, of course. Q. Yeah. My two well, favorite Arabic letters. Yeah. Sorry for. I used, to, you I used to know, I used to know how to say, like, stop, go, and that was it. Well, because I know it's different when you're talking to a man and a woman, right? Uh, we didn't really talk to women because they weren't allowed yeah, to talk of to us. Okay. 
<laughs> All right. These are the things we didn't we didn't learn. They didn't teach us because it was uh, irrelevant. Like because we would work with training some of their firefighters and training some of their military personnel. There were no women there. It was just men. Okay. And you'd usually work through a translator, but sometimes you'd say yes or no, or just grab them, and shove them, or pull them one way or another. Like, no, you're fucking up, dude. Oh, okay. Okay. A lot of hand um, signals. Yeah. A lot of charades. Like middle fingers and <laughs> fuck you and all that? No, like oh. it's actual like charades. Like, you do this. We're going to go up there. Oh, okay. <laughs> grab ladder. <laughs> yeah, you'd doing... be good at gestures. I know. I use my hands quite a bit. <laughs> um, I was going to say another. I, I thought you were going to go here both times when you were talking about misconceptions of evolution is the word theory. Oh, yeah. We didn't even oh, touch on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, it's just a theory. That that kind of idea, just a theory. Sorry, everybody in the South who I just character, caricaturized. That was uh, right. Uh, for some reason, was. I just picture. <laughs> wait, what? I had never mind. <laughs> <laughs> wait, did I do an accent that you fucked up on? No, I did an accent. Oh, okay. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck I just did. Well, well, <laughs> usually yeah, I'm and, the one that can't perform. Well, yeah. So, and, and the difference, you know, when when people say, "Well, it's just a theory; it's not a fact." Yep. No, it is a fact. Yeah, it's, it's a, a science. It's more than a fact. fact. Yeah, it's a difference yep. in in the terminology the used and the definitions used yeah. by casual observers or lay people and fucking scientists. And scientists. Yep. You know, uh, theory in in casual language and everything is is generally used to mean. Hype or uh, like a, a thesis hunch, conjecture, a hunch or yeah. you know, this is this is what I think. I want to yeah. go and find out if it's true. I wouldn't even say hypothesis because a hypothesis is an educated guess. Yeah, the way well, the way that lay people use theory is just here's a hunch. my yeah. here's my idea. Yeah. Well, I guess for, si- what for I science, think. that's yeah. that's where I think it, that's where I go with the hypothesis or your thesis. Going, hey, sure. this is what I can see a little bit of. This is how I think it's going to work. It's what should happen. Mm-hmm. Here's my hypothesis. Now I'm going to go study it. And yeah. I'm going to make changes to it along the way to my hypothesis to make it work. Yeah. Once it all works, it's been tested over and over and over, and it keeps working, it is now a theory. Here's my scientific theory yeah, that, well, on how that's this the works. Science. Yeah, I think, I think the way lay people use theory is even less than that. Oh, yeah, they it's have just, no plans to go test it. I yeah. don't care one bit. This is, what they're saying is, I want to sound smart by saying, here's what I think. Well, my that's theory is... is I have a theory that we all started out from a leprechaun who I chased yeah. down at the end of a rainbow. How's that? That there's the same as your evolution. Yeah. <laughs> well, and usually it appears more smooth like like they'll, you know, they'll be out Bigfoot hunting or something like that and they'll be like and they'll be like, "Well, this you know, you could you could see all the branches are twisted around and stuff. It looks like a nice little nest. There's something to bed yeah. down in. You've got some droppings over here, and well, you, can, you can see fell. over here on this yeah. bush that the berries have been stripped and stuff. So I, I would I would say this is this is pretty sure pretty surely a, a Bigfoot fam. Uh, this is a squatch nest, but that you know that's that's my theory. But I'm just saying. Well, yeah, that's how it's used. So, and it means absolutely shit. Yeah, yeah. Well, and fucking it, nothing. And it, and it's a totally different thing. You yep. know, scientific theories are something that is that is that cover a uh, it, it covers a, a wide range of things, right? It's mm-hmm. it's it's not one specific little thing. It it covers a wide range of the things that scientists have have observed. And in order to be accepted by the rest of the scientific community, it has to be supported like through, outside. through yeah outside and through a lot of different evidentiary lines mm-hmm. right i mean we have geology we have regular biology we have germ theory we have uh, you know all of these specific other lines of evidence that all point to evolution as being the truth that that's yeah. how shit happened that's how we got to where we are today yeah well i mean even even cosmology climatology mm-hmm. um, all that stuff Talks, you know, points toward four and a half billion year Earth. Yeah, uh, you know, which which it does it that doesn't itself prove evolution, but it substantiates the time frame evolution works on. Yeah, which is what well, I hate when people don't accept science because they're you know from scientists. How should I trust them? Like, well, you trust the Bible, which you can yourself point out <laughs> flaws in. But if that scientist has a flaw pointed out in his theory, guess what? It's no longer a theory. He starts over. Like, yeah. oh, that didn't work. Start over. And scientists love being proved wrong. 
Like, well, be, well, in that, if they're proved wrong, then they have something else to go and discover and learn more. Yeah, about. and you know your colleagues I, are like looking at your work and be like, "Hey, man, you know, I think this is wrong." And try scientists again. are constantly trying to prove other scientists that, wrong. That, yeah. I, that I think is a bigger motivator. I think. I think. I mean, Being some some with it. some may like to be proved <laughs> wrong, I, I, but I I sort of doubt that a little bit but i mean but you have hordes of other guys and and men and women that work in that field that that would love nothing more than to put their name on it saying i disproved this popular yeah. idea yeah and and then you know so there's this there's and then everybody brutal, goes i have found this his. new evidence and yeah it all and it points to something else there's a brutal peer review rigmarole that that's that sciences go through before become before, before it's even taught, published right before it's even published yeah the peer review before it's even published and then publishing before it's ever even taught to anybody yeah because yeah, once where, it's published and it gets reviewed by everyone else a lot more communities a lot more of the world reviews it and right it's underneath you know it's underneath even even bigger microscope at that point yeah right absolutely and versus you know a few scrolls that came to us over two thousands of years by a fucking bunch of illiterate sheep herding cave Jews, you know, and and that's going to be the ultimate truth. Yeah, yeah. Which is so, all, which is all fucking nonsense. Yeah, I mean, so even if scientists are wrong, I would still rather believe them. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. the the alternative is just fucking horseshit. <laughs> I mean, it's just ridiculous. You're a fucking moron if you think that's true. So something else that I get really fucking tired of hearing, it's not necessarily misconception. It's just, it's one of the arguments that, that you know, religious people or people who have not accepted evolution uh, like to trot out all the time is that, you know, even, you know, okay, sure, fine, evolution may be true, but creationism may also be true, and we need to teach people both sides of the story. We uh. need to cover all of the issues. You know, we need to mm -hmm. we need to teach the controversy. We need yep. to teach why evolution may not be true according to the Bible standards. Well, then we have to teach the Native American stories about how creation. Exactly. We need to teach the that's, Hindu that's stories. That's what create, I was getting to creation. is that you, yeah. you know you everybody who fucking says that has their own yep. worldview yep. in mind only. They're not thinking about the views of the Jains or yeah. of the Buddhists yep. or of the Muslims or anybody else. They're thinking about their own views as a Christian, if that's who's saying it, or if a Muslim is saying it, they're thinking about their Islamic views. They're not thinking about the Christian views or anybody else's. They're thinking about their own particular theological worldview. And they want, and they, and then they put that as being it has to be one or the other. Bullshit. Like, no. There are fucking thousands yep. of different stories yeah. about how he came to be. Yep. That's well. The, I mean, it's just like when that lady in South Carolina, I think it was, that passed that bill saying that that religious schools can have state funding or use state funding. That she found out that there's an Islamic school in her state, and like, no, they don't get state funding. Yeah, and you know what? And if there is any testable evidence to prove that your version of how we came to be i.e. creationism is fucking true then yeah we should teach it but you know what yep, it doesn't happen that way that's the key right there i was just gonna say because if you're if you're gonna go by folklore you know i mean i know you know maybe you don't think of it that way but i'm just saying you're gonna go by these stories right that you hear and that's that's what's true to you what mechanism are you using to decide that that's true Right. If it's just, oh, well, that's what I was always taught. Well, then guess what? Everything mm -hmm. else anyone has ever said to you ever is also true. Otherwise, and, you're not intellectually honest. And if you want to say, well, well, it's true because the Bible says so. Well, then fuck it. Let's just cancel all kinds of education. Let's yeah. only teach religious theology. Let's only let's teach what's all taught science. In the Middle, no, 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 no. The science that makes your car work. Let's get rid of that. The science that makes an airplane <laughs> no, no, fly. No, no. I'll say fuck it. But let's hope that God fucking. But makes I mean, it if work. all of the I, answers I, to life's problems are found no. within your fucking book. Then why have any other education at all? Why yeah. bother fucking talking to anybody? Why bother learning I know about what you anything? Mean, but there are so many people who would say yes. Yep. Let's do that. Let's do but it. But what I'm saying fucking is stellar idea, Dan. If you're going to accept some information that can't be demonstrated, in order to be intellectual, intellectually honest, you have to accept all information that can't be demonstrated. 
if you don't have a mechanism to determine what's true out of stuff you hear, you hear, you have to accept leprechauns, tooth fairies, Santa Claus, Bigfoot, Bible, all of that. You have to accept all don't of forget it. unicorns. Other, but and unicorns, that would be yeah. nonsense, right? Okay, so so <laughs> what mechanism are you using to determine that unicorns and leprechauns and Bigfoot are nonsense, but the Bible isn't? Right? There is no mechanism. The difference well, is science will demonstrate it, can be proven, and is proven. And it's self-correcting. Science is self-correcting. That's the, and that's the difference. And that's why evolution is fact. I think the, the and reason Adam why and Eve are not. The people cling to their Bible, to their religion. Leprechaun doesn't promise salvation or take away pain or heal you. Either does a tooth fairy or Santa. Man. But people believe that. Like, okay, well, I'm, this, there is more after this life. And that's promised me by this person. I mean that they uh -huh. believe it because they want to believe because it. Because they okay. want they to have believe any it. evidence that it's true. Okay. Yes. So here's a question. Then I want to put this to you guys. I've been thinking about this for a couple of days. Is it possible for an adult human to be fully grown up? If if grown up is to mean mature, freestanding, mature, able to deal with things, right? Is it possible for somebody to be full, considered fully mature if they're religious? Where, where they're taught not to deal with death, where they're taught they have a sky daddy who takes care of everything that they need. Uh, is, 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 is it a possible? I, I say no. I think it's childish to go running to a of Bible if is. you have an issue. Of course it's childish. Of course it is. I, now, there are, um, there, uh, Dan's hesitant, but I'm just saying there are, there are many other areas in which adults could be considered immature on this or that. But I'm just saying, can someone be considered fully adult if, if it means those things? If they're religious and they're hanging on to this idea of Sky Daddy who takes care of all my problems, I don't know, I guess, and that I'm going to live forever and I don't have to deal with death and I mean, I guess happily I guess the, ever after and all that. I guess the philosopher in me would say, well, then we're nobody's ever mature because we don't ever have a full understanding of anything, right? Like, um, you, you, you know, you if if you're not learning anything, then you're. Well, I'm not saying you're not learning anything, but I'm just saying people who cling to this idea. That they, they stunt their emotional growth by saying, okay, somebody I love and care for has just died. And instead of accepting the fact that I'll never see them again and enjoying what they, we had they, together, they the I'm going to continue to believe what I want to believe. That is, we'll be together forever in Candyland, and I just have to wait for a couple more years until I go, and then it'll be happiness forever and love and all, you know. That seems like such childish baloney to me. Yeah, but I can't. I can't imagine somebody be, being a full grown man or woman and thinking like that. At, well, at yeah, least I mean, at it that is level of maturity. Uh, like, I mean, we can we can look at it from an, with an outsider's perspective, and yeah, I think it's childish. But I mean, but they probably the look at the same time, way. Yeah, well, and at the same, they probably looking at us saying, "Well, that's just childish not to believe in that God." Yeah. Well, okay. at the same time, too, well, make your case. I know, I know, lots and lots of atheists who are emotionally stunted. And okay, well, like I said, there's there's other ways to be mature, but I'm just saying in this particular, I. I, I like, if you're mature I, in everything else except no, no, this no, no. one particular well, thing, can you still be considered... I, I, okay, so I'm not going to say that anyone is fully mature and, and, and adult in every aspect, but I think if you're religious, you can't be mature. Ah. Fully, fully. There's other areas, too, but I mean, if every other area was perfect and you were religious, you're still not mature a mature adult. I don't know if I agree with that 100%. Okay. What, why, why not? I mean, just because you're religious, I mean, that doesn't deem maturity. I think maturity comes from a lot of other aspects. I, I agree. If you, if you if are... Everything else is, but, if but, everything else is perfect... Yeah, but I'm saying if you have a religious conviction, and that's what helps you get through something, I'm not saying about lying to yourself, but say you have a bad day, and you going home and just reading through your scripture helps you unwind, and that's your, you know, your getaway. Cool. Other adults got, hey, I like to go home and have a beer at the end of the day. Help me unwind. That's my getaway or, yeah, or do but, something else. But as long as it's to themselves, they're not pressing on anyone else. No. It's something they're on their own. I don't think it matters. I'm saying personally, but, though, because yeah. beer does not offer you the, 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 the situation where no. you've well, got, you got a sky daddy who takes care of everything for you. And as long, yeah, but, as, as, long as you love him... Everything's fine. You'll see everybody. The beer doesn't offer that. If they want to believe that, I yeah. Have, if they want to, but, that's but the thing fine. is, that's why. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, it has no. Can they be mature? Uh, yeah, I do think they can. 
I, I don't think you made that case. I mean, b- believing in religion doesn't demonstrate maturity. Agreed. I mean, we've agreed on that. So saying that if you saying that if you hold on to that belief, you cannot be mature. Agree. Yeah, absolutely. Is it's it's, a, it's almost like a little bit of a fallacy because they're saying that you. I mean, I I don't think my aunt's very mature in the way she attacks me in my atheism sometimes. Well, but I'm, as far as an adult, when we're like one on one, of course she's very mature. We're a, well, adults. I think, I think I'm Matt willing. Is kind of I'm willing to see it your way. I just I'm just saying. Assuming that they're a hundred percent mature in every area of their life, but they still have the idea that there's a daddy poo up there in the sky who's watching out for me, loves me, cares for me, takes care of everything I'm I need, and and is going to love me for eternity, and I'm going to see everybody. That's fucking baby yeah, shit. If, if I may, I, I think Matt is kind of likening it to imagine a 65-year-old man who still believes in Santa Claus. Would yep. you consider that person to be mature? Yep. That's exactly. I, w- I, would, I would consider it to be a little batshit crazy. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> but, what I mean. But on a, or, on a maturity level, would you consider that person to be a mature adult if they still fucking believe in Santa Claus? If he's believed it for 60 years straight, I no. think he's got some sort of syndrome. But okay. you haven't answered my question. No, right, right, I because, would not take yeah, him as being but, mature. But, 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 and we're not, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, right? I just uh, like I, I just I haven't been able to figure a way around this one because I think religion has so it's it's been so popular for so long in part because there are evolutionary reasons for it. I don't know what those are, but also because it allows people to think and believe what they want to. See, I don't think and that instead of facing the reality, the cold, dark death that faces everybody and all of our loved ones, instead of doing that, we just say, well, we'll just pretend that never happens and we'll never <laughs> deal with it. That's what religion does. And so I think anybody who's a grown person that thinks like that is not fully mature. I totally understand what you're saying. I, I I'm get not where you're sure. going. But do you? Do you? I, I don't know if Ryan completely understands. But I don't. I don't know if I agree with it though. I know. I, I, know, I know, and I'm not I agree sure. with it either. But I can't think of a good reason why Me I don't. Me too. I'm. I'm. I, I'm not saying. I'm not saying this it's is gonna absolute. Take some pondering. I know. That's why I said I've been thinking about it for a few days. I was trying to think of a different way to put it. Except I. I, I don't think mature is the right or immature. I love is it the right, right there. way. To, I love that word it. right there. So when I think of immature, I think, perfect. I think of someone running through a playground pooping their pants. Yep. I mean, which I probably did last week. I don't know. Well, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Otherwise, mature adults <laughs> who do that all sometimes. Time. I mean, uh, but see, that's I, the wrong the wrong I, Thai I see, place I, will I do some weird no shit to you. At this point, it's a fucking playground. That's what it is. I think. I think maturity it allows is, 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 them to not have to think about the real stuff that really happens in reality. They never have to deal with it, so they, they can, go on playing in the playground. Well, they still and deal with it. But they themselves. deal with it in a different no, way. But they're not dealing with it. They're saying it's temporary. I got a few more years of shit myself in the playground, and then well, it's like, off to fucking Happy Land with Ronald McDonald it, though, forever know with me and everyone I love, and we get to go down the grimace slide for eternity. But like, as That's far as you talk is. about like with like death, with someone else dies, saying, "Well, I get to see them in heaven," talking about maturity level and saying, "Well." I just kind of go and realize, well, he's fucking dead. That's 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 it. That's the end. All I got is memories. But if you believe that Santa Claus right, is going but... to bring them back sometime, well, that's fucked up. <laughs> but but them Jesus... believing that they're going to go to the same place and be with them, I'm like, well, you're almost kind of right. You aren't going to the same place. You're going to be in the fucking ground. I'll be going to the North Pole to visit them at Santa's <laughs> workshop. I, I, I mean, I guess the main point is that they're they're really not learning how to deal with adult things. They're like they, they're. St- They've, they're and, stunted and, and foreverness. Well, right? I think like I, I just I, as far my, as death goes, everyone deals with death in a different way. Yes, but everybody's weird about death. We're all just weird about it in our own, own special way. Right, yeah. right. Fair enough. Right? Own and, rituals, and there's, own way of dealing with stuff. And there's many, 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 many situations in my life where I'm not fully mature. Oh yeah, there's a lot. Of That's people. fine. But I'm just saying, if you said there was a person who was 100 percent mature in everything, but they were religious and had those views that I'll see my loved ones again, and and they don't deal with the death. Now, can they be? I just don't they, think it I deems them as automatically an immature person or not being able to be fully mature. I think it does. I think we're looking at the. I, I don't know that I, I would think say it does. that they are immature. I don't know that they're fully mature. How's that? 
Well, it's a, is that a is that a distinction without a difference, or is that a um, or is that a subtle distinction? I, I think I think maybe you, it's I an immature you're, act. You're but agreeing with me because person. because I'm saying they can't be fully mature. You're saying they're not immature. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm saying they're not fully mature. Yeah, so but you're they're not. But I, <laughs> well, let's yeah. move on from this one. This one's just like it's. <laughs> I know it's, it's going to go nowhere. We're just going to keep butting heads on it because I've been thinking. Of, well, I think I think people like that. I, I yeah. don't know. I've been thinking about. I, like I said, I've been thinking about it for a couple of days. I can't think of an exception to it. I just I I you know honestly I guess I, it's, it goes I guess it's it, a, it goes both ways. If you're looking from the mind of someone who is a theist, looking at someone that goes, well, they just deny God, they deny the Holy Spirit, deny everything. That's just immature. How can they be that way? That's just totally immature. They would look at it from the same light. It's like well, but that sounds like an opinion. I mean, based on what? I mean, I've given you a multiple. No, because they're basing it off of their belief system. They're saying because they fully believe. There's people that truly yeah, yeah, fucking I, believe it. I agree. I agree. So that they, person who truly believes it in the bottom of their heart to be absolutely true will look at you and think, well, that guy's just immature, not what, believing in that. But what makes it immature? Exactly. Well, it's but, not. No, but I've given you multiple reasons but why I don't. I but I don't that, agree with it as being immature. But you haven't given me reasons why you don't. You've just said you don't. <laughs> well, and if they and if they fully, their way of dealing with if it. If they it's, truly, fully, honestly, really believe the Santa Claus is real when they're 60, is that is that any different? It's well, I mean, if he has like, if he has the brain of a five-year-old, no, it's no different because he's just okay. Well, <laughs> well, yeah, enough, I'll, but, so, I'll accept that. I'll accept yeah, that. I'll accept that. Does he have dementia? If if they have the brain no. of a five-year-old, it's okay to be religious as an adult, unless that is the case. <laughs> then you're a fucking immature baby. I guess then, I, I I'm the I'm the atheist type that's doing. Let them believe in whatever the fuck. No, they I, want. well, yeah, I, I'm totally I'm that too. way too. It's just it's just it's just one question that came up that was that was. Tangential. Okay, here, how about this? I but would, I, I would, was wondering. Instead what, of saying I, I immature, fully, I fully expected. Total, maybe it's a. I total. I expected no. uh, well, a unanimous vote on this one, so it's pretty interesting. I, I, I guess I would say it's more of a childish belief. Yes, I wouldn't say they're immature. Because when I think of immaturity, mm -hmm. I think of a totally separate. Well, I'm just like, saying the way in, you interact with another person shows yeah, but maturity. I'm just saying the way in, you deal with stuff in that area. They're not being mature about dealing with the finality of death. They're just saying, eh, it's not forever. Well, it is. But they're saying, nah. Well, well it I is. usually no, try to I'll let be with death them forever just on the shrug right off my shoulder. Like, I try not to well, deal I, with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, sure. But, <laughs> which is why I'm surprised you're taking this. Uh, 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 it's fine. But I mean, I they mean, might. Uh, they, uh, their, their, their way of doing it is probably a better way of dealing with death than I've ever dealt I with. I disagree. Them. Well, than you. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't know how you deal with it, but I mean, I Not think good. I think dealing with it in reality is better than pretending it doesn't exist. I guess I don't pretending what doesn't exist. Death. Death. Oh, they believe death exists. They just don't believe it's the end. Well, sure. Okay. Same thing. So, so, so it's I don't just, think it's. it's just I don't little... think it's immature to let them hold on to that belief. Oh, I, I'm not. I think it's about a that. comfort. It is, and it's I would an love to believe comfort. that. And it's an immature comfort. I, that's why I don't, I, I don't. I don't see why it makes a difference, though. If it's an immature comfort, mature. I mean, to them, they still fully believe it. To them, it's not an immature thing. I'm not saying I have well, yeah, any big political or now, social issue with it. I think it's just anybody. A I had. I, mean, I think anybody, possible? religious or irreligious, would think a 60 year old man still believing, still believing in Santa, is pretty immature, no matter what fucking religion sure. you go to. But as sure. far as people believing certain different things. That the religion teaches them, and fully believing in it, I don't think that's. Well, I, I mean, mean, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to grill you on it, but I mean, just like, what's the difference? What's the difference between a sixty-five-year-old believing in Santa and a twenty-five-year-old believing his mom did not just die of cancer? Because a sixty-year-old man in believing in Santa does a rarity, where. Uh, so, a well, six-year-old man a, believing he's going to see his, his wife well, again that just passed just, away is not a rarity. That's, a, that's an argument, uh, argumentum ad populum, yeah. but. Even if that wasn't the case, let's say Santa Claus wrote the Bible, then you'd have three billion well, then people believing that. Well, then we'd have a totally different religion going on. It'd be we'd be praising all all hail Santa. Sure, <laughs> but it still doesn't. Sure, but that's exactly what we have, except it's Christianity. Okay, and that's what I'm talking about now. I guess I don't see it as I. I would say childish as far as being immature. I I wouldn't think it's immature. As a childish okay. belief, it's something that's, that's well, because I right. think it's childish because it's obviously it's so, not what I, what well, I don't it believe. Is, yeah, maybe I, I, but a Christian would think someone who's a uh, who's a Muslim has a childish belief. 
a Muslim might think a Hindu has a childish I, belief. I, I don't know. I don't know where that's coming from. I mean, I because they all believe they have the one true religion, the they, one true God. They, so they look believe, at the other religion and go, well, "That's bullshit." That but religion's... they all believe in an afterlife, though. And they yeah, but all they believe, believe their afterlife is bullshit. And... Yeah, sure, sure. Do you, do, do you think a Christian honest believes that that no. terrorist is going to get seventy two virgins no, when he dies? No, of course they don't. No, they don't. They don't believe in their God. Of course they don't. But is it is it a definitional thing? Like what? What what yeah, would you define out, as being I, I, immature? I would define as being immature as like you know, if if I were to go to an uh, upscale restaurant and start blowing bubbles in my fucking milk, that's fucking immature. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sure. I would, I that's would what I that. define as sure. being like just doing something, just basically acting like a two year old in public. Like just so, so so what I'm saying is that you know you're looking at a 35 year old guy. His mom just died of cancer, and yeah. he's like, "I gotta go blow blow bubbles in my milk in in a cafe in public for the rest of eternity with her, as long as I just wait another thirty years or whatever." That's well, fucking, well, yeah, if that's, that's what I like to do with mom when he gets to I'm die. I'm just saying, like, so, that's, but no, that's but see, how I view it. I look so at immaturity I, as an act, not a belief. Well, well, okay. So I, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm, look, I'm listening sure. to this, and I'm and I'm hearing, I'm hearing. I, I I I think I agree with Matt here, but I'm I'm hearing Ryan's side, and I think I think what I'm getting from Ryan is that is that Ryan Ryan thinks that if you if you act in a way that is that is discordant with social norms, yeah, that is immature. And so, yeah. if the social norm is that oh, okay, is that you you believe in a god? I see. Then that's, that's not, not really immature. There's, that's why. That, that's, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. It's not immature. That, okay. it's, it's a common. It's, that's why I said it's a okay. common. So thing. it's so it's so it's not like a weird belief. It's no, not, no, 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 no. no we're, yeah. we're, not, we're not arguing. Okay, that either. so I'm a little meta then uh, on yeah. this. That's why I said it's more of a childish belief, and I said it's not anything to do with. I'm like, I don't. That's why I don't think it's mature. Well, and and like I said, I think I think I think. Matt is arguing just strictly from a a full a, a full development of of human brain yeah. or psyche yeah. Uh, yeah. of human emotion a, a and into- and rationality, right? Yep. It, can you be? F- I, I guess maybe it would be better stated as can you be fully rational almost? Because uh, because to be fully rational, you would have to be fully mature okay. and everything, well, right? That's obvious. That's sure. obvious. You can't be rational, sure, and be religious. And so, but then I think so. Ryan, Ryan is viewing it as okay. It's not a question of maturity because they're not acting like a child. You know, I think Ryan I think is they tying. Are. I think Ryan is tying. Well, but I'm, I'm talking more specifically about acts out, I'll, outside of social. I'll, norms. I'll hear you out. Right. So I think I think Ryan is is viewing this more as acting in a way that it, that is outside of societal norms. You know, if they're mm-hmm. acting like a child. Or they're acting mm-hmm. inappropriate for their age, you know. Mm-hmm. If they're that's immature. if you have a ten year old who's okay. running around banging pots and pans right. at a restaurant, that's something that a five year old would be doing. I see, right? I see that. So that that ten year old is immature, mm-hmm. and so I think that's, as far as that's the where grieving Ryan family having, at a funeral think saying, "Oh, I hope to see my child again." I don't see that as immature. I see yeah. it as their way of dealing with it, way it gives them a little well, bit of hope, and, even and, though if it's but false you're hope. That, but you're viewing that as odd, being but... more in line with a societal norm because right. that's what m- the majority of people do. People, yeah. And so it's not that you're acting immature. You're not, you're not a five-year-old who's throwing a tantrum, w- walking over, shaking the casket about, wake up, daddy, wake up, wake up, yeah. wake up. Right. That would be, I think that would be immature. Would be, yeah. yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah, so, definitely. so in Ryan's mind, maturity and immaturity okay. is more tied to social, social norms. Behavior. Behavior. Right, right. And mine, mine has more to and do And yours with is more psychological, psyche. Independent thinking and being freestanding, right. yeah. be, being an adult that's able to deal with things. So and I think it's a definitional, yeah. Strength, so it's a definitional know, difference. Have emotional strength and that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I, I, it was weird because I thought there wouldn't be a disconnect, a disconnect. at all. That's why I'm like that, anybody here, but because <laughs> if you if you're going with that, then I'm like then like eighty percent of this fucking world is well, immature. I, yes, that's correct. <laughs> and and I, I and I understand what Ryan is saying, but I, I disagree. Do, I do now, yeah. yeah. But I but I still think eighty percent of this world is immature in yeah. that area. There there are it's, many 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 of them. I would say they're immature, but they don't act outside of social norms. I would go with, with sure, but there and there and there are a, probably ninety nine percent of those people I've just mentioned that are immature in that area are more mature than I am in other areas. So I'm not saying that, but I'm just uh, my question that I've been pondering was just: Is it possible to be fully well adult, mature? Uh, 
I tend I tend to like the 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 in this age and age using the the word willfully ignorant because you have yeah, sure, you have sure the tools are, at your fingertips that, to course. research and find the evidence. That's why you know I would say it's instead of saying immature, it's just more of turning a blind eye to it. Like you know, yeah, like like people like the religious side says, well, they know there's a god, they just don't want to believe in it. That can be more like, well, you know, there's evidence right there. You can go fucking read it, but you won't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, and like I said, I think we're just. I think you, I think you guys are discussing a, a definitional difference more than anything. I, I still, I still think there's a substantial difference, but there, there's most of it was was definitional. Yeah, I, I would still say that. Yeah, you know, seventy or eighty percent of the world is childish about that. Well, I, and I would, I, think I would Ra- tend to agree. I think Ryan might disagree about. No, that's why I think I, I, I say the belief that they hold is childish. Yep. Yeah, exactly. I say the belief is childish. I'm not saying the person themselves is childish, yeah. but their belief they hold is a childish belief. And, I, and so I think like Ryan, Ryan, Ryan Santa is Claus speaking is a more childish about their, belief. Right. Okay. I think yeah, Ryan exactly. speaking more about their actions. And... Okay. Because that's what yeah, makes a person really to me sur- is more was, of their action. I was, I was that's why when you say immature, really like I, when I think of immaturity, I think it, it, it's an action. You will... Like it's not like what's going you're, on in your you're head. You're thinking of I'm a foot stomping tantrum. I'm yeah. still on board. I'm still not... I still think, yes, that's true. When you're praying, when you're pretending to talk to people who aren't there, when you think you're going to see somebody, that's well, some of those are charlatans. Behavior. Some of those are making money off of people. Fine. They're different. Fine. My question was, can you be fully mature and still hold those beliefs? And I say no. All right, what's the next subject? <laughs> We've been talking about that for like 40 minutes. I know. and I, bet, I think it was a good discussion. And I bet everyone loved it. No, I think that was really good. Well, people want debates, and we don't ever have them within the, the group of us <laughs> like that. I think that was a good discussion. Yeah. Um, we'll see if I'm back next week after Ryan kicks my butt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, write in who, who you think it was correct in that one. Yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah. No, no one ever writes in, though. Well, we've had a few. They? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do it more. Yeah, godlessrevolution at gmail.com. Let us know who, who you guys side with. We'll, or just get on the Facebook. Yeah, get on the Faces book. We'll, we'll, we'll respond to that, too. Uh, we covered that. Oh, we we're talking about religion real quick? Mm-hmm. I just got to get it out there. Me, I talked to Dan about it earlier when I first got here. Ken Ham might be losing his money to build the Ark. Again. Again, for the second time. <laughs> How did he lose it the first time? Uh, the first time was when I, I, I know if it was a, they just took it away. I couldn't remember what it was, <laughs> they, why he, they, well, the first the time, nebulous, they took it away. They were going to give him like 50% of the total cost, which was like $20 million they were going to give him. And the second go around, I think he's only getting like, the, who, who's the they though? The state. Oh, really? Was, the state of Kentucky was going to give him this money? Yeah. Nice. Uh, and the second time around, I think he only got like a quarter of what it, uh, the total project value was. But it was through uh, a blog, and I think it was a Patheos blog. I, you said his name earlier. I can't remember. His... Dan, <clears throat> excuse me, Dan yeah. Errol. Yeah, was doing some research and actually f- brought up some old uh, applications for employment with his organization. And found that it was you had to be strictly like creationist, religious person in order to work there. And they're kind of like, well, that kind of goes, that goes against, against the EEOC. Yep. So he can't get the money now. Well, because he hasn't officially gotten it taken away, but it looks like it's a pretty good possibility. Nice. Since he's basically being investigated now. Great fucking job, Dan. Way to be, man. I mean, how do they not know? Nobody cares to look at it. I mean... And anybody who is in the know isn't going to fucking say anything about it, right? They, they want the, the kickback from the yeah. museum. Yeah, they're not, they're not going <laughs> to publish that anywhere. Like, we only hire believing Christians here at the... I mean, I, I think I actually remember reading the actual blog on that one because i was going in there and had an actual like photograph of the application where it's like you must believe in this you must attend this kind of church and everything i'm like holy fuck well the lds church does that i mean they, yeah, and they I think hire it's, all the time and... I, I think it's unless you're hiring for an actual church position i think it should be illegal well yeah i th- i think so too and i think it's fucking bullshit like, I used to get contacted by recruiters all the time. I'm guessing that every recruiter I've ever been in contact with now has my account oh. red flagged as do not contact about positions with the LDS church because ah, I never hear yeah. about them anymore. But I used to get, you know, I, I used to get contacted by recruiters all the time who uh, were, were hiring for a position within the LDS church in their, in their IT department, you know, doing some type of computer work. And, 
in order to work for the LDS church in their IT, you have to be a uh, temple recommend holding in good standing LDS religiously faithful person. Yeah. And of course I'm not. And so it would always piss me off, especially I would, oh, I can't tell you how <laughs> fucking mad I would get when they wouldn't disclose that fact ahead of time and I would waste my fucking time. You know, you know, I would get a the process and like, oh, you're not. Yeah, I would. I would get a job position description saying, you know, we need somebody who knows this, this, and this, who has experience in this. Oh, and know. a temple recommend. Yeah, and 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 of course, you know, I fit every qualification to a T. So I, you know, I update my resume. I send, you know, I reply back, ask them, you know, what are the requirements? Try to set up an interview, all that kind of shit. And then they're like, oh, by the way. You also have to have a temple recommend and be a member and uh, an active member in good standing of the LDS Church. And I'm like, motherfucker, you should say that shit up front. Don't fucking yeah, waste that's, my time. It, I mean, that's that's if you're, that's if you're getting sort a of job, pushing a legal line, but well, not not really. If it's a job with the actual church, it's completely legal. But if it's for a well, yeah, uh, if yeah, it's if for it's a job private. at like a restaurant downtown, well, they do that too. That's illegal. Is it? It should be. Yeah, it should be, but I mean, is it? I, I think do, it is. They that's, do do that. That's not an equal opportunity employment. If you're saying, "Well, Denny's right, will right, only right. Denny will Denny's well, will only it hire it Christians," it wouldn't be Denny's, but it would be like maybe a private company that's got some, you know, that's that's growing decently in Utah. That's a that's. But a, a company's not a person, so a company doesn't have first amendment. A company rights. is a person and does have first amendment. I thought they got rights. taken away. I don't think so. The uh, Citizens United Act, I thought, got slashed. No, it's got freedom of speech and now freedom no. of religion. Well. Just because of Hobby because Lobby, of Hobby Lobby, that didn't did that give it personhood? Because that yes. whole the yeah. whole the whole no, business it's, having it's, personhood got taken away. I no, thought. it already mm. had personhood no, 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 no. in freedom of speech, and then the Hobby Lobby case challenged it on personhood for freedom of religion as well, and that stood. Yeah, based on the five fucking cunts that stand in the the Catholic <laughs> cunts that stand in the fucking Supreme Court. I just thought it got taken away because they're using it for tax reasons. By the way. I use the C word for all the men in the Supreme Court because the two awesome women in the Supreme Court ruled against it as they should have. Oh, I like to think the cunt is just something that everybody uh, should say I know. all the time. In Britain it is, but I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> I I'm say just it all saying, time. in case anyone was offended, I meant that to all the douchebag men. Not the women. An- another, another gender slur. But... Uh, Silence. Yeah, no, because I thought it was <laughs> with that whole thing. Because there was a the Citizens United, uh, where it basically were for tax purposes and for for contributing money to different organizations. A business was considered a person, so they got to slip through those tax yeah, loopholes. Then that got tossed out, so a business is no longer allowed to have the same rights as a person is anymore. It no, does. they still are. It does. It, it does in, in, in it does in in freedom of speech and freedom of religion. There's no way a few dreadlocked, dirty hippies are going to overturn a fucking whole corporation of Mitt Romney's, dude. Not in this country. <laughs> Did well, you say Falcon? A Falcon. <laughs> It's just two. It's called did I? I probably did. <laughs> it's just two dirty hippies. Oh, no, 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 no. Just the two guys we got to turn. Not Mitt Romney. <laughs> I was going to say the Koch brothers. Coke, uh, Coke yeah, brothers. Coke yeah. brothers. No way, yeah. dude. That, they're, they're, no the, way. they're the two that control. They're the ones that push for Citizens United in the first place. Uh, Which Citizens United is a backwards way of saying because it's nothing that unites citizens. Well, yeah. They, yeah, I don't trust those fucking guys at all, man. Yeah, well. I don't understand. Like, if if a if a corporation is a person, can we send a corporation to jail? No, but they're to war. But to war, can it vote? Yeah. It, it had something to do with. Can they buy cigarettes? Uh, they can vote with their money. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's what it's come down. That's to. what it was. It was. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it had a lot to do with contributing money to certain political organizations, where the business wasn't. And had to like do a different fight. Yeah, it had all these weird caps. But when it became a person. When they, the whole Citizens United thing, that, that kind of went away so people could funnel money through businesses and that business could just give money to that political organization and fund them however they wanted without any real punishment for doing it. Yeah, it's a, it's a whole GOP. But that's what I thought. I thought it actually, well, just recently I thought that the Citizens United thing got defeated in, in, way after uh, Hobby Lobby. It's a bunch of heinous no. fuckery. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, can, it, can, it, can a business that's been around for 22 years buy alcohol? Yes. Well, you know, businesses are evolving. Mm. Okay. That's that's what's happening. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm convinced. I I've had a cocktail or two. No. Yeah. 
No, I was trying. That was to take a hell of an argument. The, I was trying to take it back to the evolution uh, topic oh, of the. Didn't even catch it. That was a segue that was good and failed anyway. I know we need someone cruising by on a little two wheeled <laughs> motor vehicle for dance segues. Okay. <laughs> Bunch of bunch of people in Not brightly a colored uniforms with brown with red noses and big shoes. <laughs> <laughs> a clown segue. Yes. <sighs> oh, All right. Oh man, I don't even know if I don't know if we should get into the laryngeal nerve with a giraffe. Oh yeah, you well Seems before like you a, went to go yeah, shake was, hands with a midget, you <laughs> or a little person. <laughs> that was uh, that was two of those trips ago. Was it two? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so that I want before that was before me and Ryan got into it. I want to hear about the lar lar lar. Well, you already yeah okay laryngeal uh huh laryngeal nerve of uh -huh. the giraffosaurus. Yeah, well it's in the wrong place. Well, it's fine. It's just that all mammals have it right. It runs from the brain to the sides of the face, the cheeks, right, and it's what controls the mouth and all that that the kind jaw of activity, movement right? up and down or what. Yeah, that kind of thing. Um, so the obvious move would be from the brain to the face, right? Have a few inches of nerve. Quickest way from point Sounds, A to point B is to go straight there. Yeah, sure. shortest point between two distances sure. is a straight line. Mm -hmm. um, in smaller mammals, the nerve actually kind of got caught up. I'm going to have to get the right term here. Um, in, in the, around the Batelli's duct of the heart. Right. So when you're like a shrew, so they talk through their heart. Yeah. Yeah. They, oh, they well, that's adorable. <laughs> yeah, they they speak. <laughs> they might. But when you're when you're a shrew in their little you know, shrew tongues, a half an inch or something to loop around is no big deal. But as the giraffes have evolved, the laryngeal nerve is still around the Batelli's duct in the heart, which is now like a twenty or thirty foot trip. For that nerve that comes out of the base of the brain all the way down the neck around the Batelli's duct of the heart and then all the way back up the neck to the face. That's why they're not much of talkers. Right. Which, which they could, those giant tongues though. Yeah. Yeah. They're 18 black. inches. Yeah. Yeah. But that, you know way that too nerve. much about giraffes and their tongues. <laughs> <laughs> they're pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, Do they like peanut butter? Mm. I like eucalyptus oil. It burns, but it's okay after the first little. They're a little immature, though. Ryan will probably disagree. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've seen the way they slap their heads around. Yeah. They're brutal, dude, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah, when they get into fights and start yeah. fucking rat oh, yeah. beating each other with their goddamn necks. Yeah. I, I don't. They can't, really, they can't kick each other very easily. No, so they, it's they, all they, will about do, the neck they will do that, too. That's what happens when you're yeah. dropped at birth. When you're dropped at birth? <laughs> yeah. You they don't, they don't sit down to have a kid. They drop no. it. That's true. That's true. And they're walking in minutes. Yeah. And my shitty kid can't walk for fucking three or four years. <laughs> I was like two. I'm just kidding. Humans are pathetic. Yeah, we are. <laughs> so helpless. Seriously, for like 12 years, we can't do anything. <laughs> I really thought shitty kid would do better. Well, now I've Nobody started dared to laugh. Well, now I've started an argument on my timeline about... Whether you can be, uh oh, whether you can be, <laughs> whether you can be fully mature and still believe in God, and there's there's oh a, god, that's a, a little discussion going on on my timeline about it. Didn't even wait to get me involved in that, and it was my fucking question. <laughs> <laughs> god, yeah, damn it, Dan. Yeah, sorry. It's good. No, just mention just mention I, me. I think it. I think it's a good discussion. It is. Just mention me. Just <laughs> mention you. Yeah, just mention that I posed that question for you. All right. <laughs> so godless, the Godless Revolution discussion. Just plug it. All right. Anyway, it would have been much simpler had it been a perfect God that created giraffes to make the nerve go from the base of the brain mm -hmm. to the cheek, a couple inches. But instead, it goes the 20 fucking feet to wrap around, just like you see in smaller mam mammals. Because he evolved from a small because mammal. Because they evolved. And it worked. And it just kept getting long, longer yeah, and longer and, and longer and longer. When you're talking longer. about nerve reactions, it's you know almost the speed of light, which mm -hmm. even over the length of double the giraffe's neck is not that big of a deal. It's still functional, right? And that's the important point about evolution, as long as it works well enough. Right, but had it been in, had it been engineered by a perfect being, 
There's no fucking way you'd well, just see like, anything uh, like that. Also, how the neck giraffe's head or their neck muscles work like a G suit for a pilot. Right. If that giraffe puts his head all the way down to the ground, yeah, he would he would he would red out. All the blood would rush to his head because it's being pumped. But instead, it constricts the vessels in his yep. neck to to constrict the flow or right, to open to it up it to from, push more to have more right. pushed up. So, yeah. well, yeah. Yeah. Also, I mean, there's a lot about gir- giraffes anatomy. I mean, their hearts are enormous anyway. But also, well, oh, they have to be. That's a lot of yeah. They have that's to be a lot of blood <laughs> all lot, the way yeah, up. Yeah, there, yeah fighting against gravity. Yeah, it's enormous. But also, which is also just a theory. What? Right. <laughs> right. Well, that theory it tells me as a firefighter, it's like 10 psi per every 10 feet you go up. You have to increase your water pressure. What now? Oh, for every 10 feet, you got to increase it 10 psi. Oh yeah. So if you're fighting, uh, if like you're fighting on the third floor of a building, you got to give an extra twenty psi to overcome the gravity of it going up. Oh, mm. the third floor. Hmm. hmm. I guess I'd never really thought about it. I've always just thought about it like: is the valve always or all the way on or all the way off? No, I, I'm I'm the one that's sitting on the pump doing the really quick math equations in my head of like. Okay, that's what kind of line we got. That's how much we got out. That's how much water we need to get that. That's how much water's gonna be coming out at the end of it. And hmm. It's a lot more intense. Little than things just, you, that I never really yeah, thought about. You don't yeah. just turn it, turn it on. You get up there and you're actually turning knobs and controlling valves <laughs> and opening. Mine's always doing a really quick pump, turning knobs. I know, <laughs> doing some quick calculations. <laughs> <laughs> I always had the quick calculations afterward. Like, if I don't see her. And then I bump into her eight months from now, and, and she's not a she's, child. She's she has a bigger <laughs> bump than the last time I saw her. Or Run has away a bump when I bump into her. Then I'm gonna have to do some more calculations, and and maybe I'll be doing calculations for eighteen years. <laughs> <laughs> it's not mine. <laughs> no. Then it was always I should calculate better how many drinks I have before I do anything. Yeah, yeah. Protection. Yeah. We and took gotta, a car apart one day where we did every bolt we took off we drank a beer. Where every part you took out like individual like no bolts like every or individual like, bolt like taking apart like eh there's a bolt ah let's get a beer ah, it's time for a eh, beer. there's another bolt time to let's take get a break a and a beer it got to the point where we had to call someone to bring more beer and like KFC <laughs> over. <laughs> <laughs> and then all that beer and that KFC was gone, and the and engine had just to like cure double vision. We had finally gotten the engine yeah. out, and it's like, hey, engine's out. We're out of beer and KFC again. Let's just have a fucking barbecue, and so people will come over and bring more beer and Jesus. food. <laughs> I got I got so fucking tore up when we went to go see uh, Saturday's Voyeur. Yeah, when Atheists of Utah had the big group thing to go and see that, I was drinking wine like it was fucking water. And well, it is if Jesus was there. Seriously, toward <laughs> seriously nice. toward the end of the. <laughs> <laughs> that was a deep cut. <laughs> yes. It well it was probably because his people were on stage. Oh yeah. But oh. toward the end of the show, I seriously had to like I was I had double vision fucking big time. I had to You're close the- one eye to be able to see what the fuck was going on on stage because I couldn't <laughs> focus with both eyes open. That's it was when rough. That's when you've had too much. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the show finishes and I turned to Tracy and I was like Oh my god, I'm so sorry. You have to drive home. I can't. I can't fucking drive. You're okay, right? <laughs> yeah. Nice. Sorry, a little I just I was a little I just wanna communicate that I couldn't see straight. Yeah. <laughs> Scrub hut. Well, finally, little known uh fact about evolution. It it's evolves. Con- That's con- a conclusively proven. That's a blank page. Conclusively proven. <laughs> That uh, people can't believe in God and be fully mature. <laughs> it is a blank page. That asshole. <laughs> Proven. Proven. Fuck. That was just a thought I had. But uh, Do we have any games tonight? I have no games tonight. None of the games. I'm thinking we're going to need to be ending this one soon anyways, because I'm going to fall asleep. <laughs> oh, yeah, you've been up all fucking night taking some awesome uh, pictures. I went and took photos of the blood moon last night, and I didn't get home till 7 in the morning. Oh, Dude, wow. you seriously do take some pretty fucking kick-ass <laughs> pictures, man. I was looking at those today at work, 
and I was just thinking I should go and check them out where I can get a bigger picture of it. But I actually, if you're just looking at them on my phone, most of my photos that I have, if you want a bigger picture of them or if you want to get a print done, I have all the raw formats of them or they're like 20 meg photos, like huge file formats so they can blow them up as big or as small as you want. Nice. You know, I, I know one of your friends who just moved into a house and yeah, yeah needs needs yeah. some uh, wall coverings. I, I do have all an of extra the walls, canvas so. print at home, which you still probably remember, <laughs> of the uh, downtown Salt Lake City's old courthouse or city hall building at night. Oh, the was that at Washington Square? Yes. Was it? Yeah, with That's the trees right there. That's a cool right old building, man. Yeah, with the, I just like that one, too, because you had the clouds coming over top of it, and the moon was just shining right behind the building. All the lights inside the building were still on, and which were illuminating the trees next to it, so... But yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. It, it, the, you take some really fucking cool pictures, man. I like I like them very much. Did you have a chance to see them yet? I've seen some. I haven't seen any of the recent ones. I was, I was bringing them up right now. If the internet sees works, look at this here. Or you got it right there? Yeah. I didn't think the blood moon turned out the best. Oh, that one's pretty sweet. Yeah, oh, that's that pretty one. sweet. Look at this. I like the I like your valley shots too. Yeah, looking over Salt Lake. Those are sweet. Where Where are those? Uh, if you look up towards Farmington. No, I mean, where can people find those photos? Oh, on my personal Facebook, which is like hidden. Is it hidden? Yeah. Oh, okay. You put you made this as a public post. Did I? Yeah. Oh, I think maybe my photos are public. No, but you're a friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a public post. Oh, Shared is it? with public, yeah. Oh, maybe I do because I, cause I usually like, well, because like my f- Facebook name, you can't search me on Facebook. My phone number is a fake phone number. My Email is a fake email in there, and everything else is fake. All right, so none of you can ever see these photos, but they are sweet. They're pretty cool. Yeah, I'll share them with the Godless Revolution. Yeah, do that. Facebook. Yeah, because then people can go there and talk about things and talk about the blood moons. Mm-hmm. Whether we're doing, uh, whether people are mature if they believe yeah. in God as adults. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> All right. Um. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thanks, everybody. I am Ryan Duffy, and I think morale, I don't know, I'm tired. <laughs> morality? <laughs> no. Not morale. whatever. That thing we were arguing about before. That thing we were arguing about before. I still be maintain my mature position and mature. about that. Yeah, yeah. I, I do not think people can be fully mature and be religious. And, and I, am, I am Matt. I am Dan the Moderator Ellis. Yeah, well, sort of. I mean, sort of. Kind of. Really, Kind of agreed with me, but well, yeah. I still do. But yeah. fucking moderators. I, <laughs> <laughs> moderators can agree one way or the other. That's true. That's true. All you right, did, you did help me see a side of it, but uh, I want to hear what everyone else thinks about it. Yeah, write yes. in. It's honestly, it's just something I've been wondering. Yeah, and if you write in, we'll we'll, point, we'll read going. your emails on air, and we'll, we might pull yeah. up if you got something cool we want to discuss. So fucking do it. Yeah, and I'm willing to change right. my mind. You can right. do it. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening. Till next time.